Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. Your Majesty, where the hell is Dino Time? Gonk. Random critical hits. What's there to say about them? They're as old as video games themselves. Or to be more accurate, they predate them. And to be honest, that's kind of a part of why I generally tend to dislike them. They feel like an archaic mechanic that really should stay in tabletop games, where the entire point of the game is that every little thing can be determined by the roll of a dice. Or at the very least, JRPGs where people are just more tolerant of them for some reason. RNG isn't always a bad thing, and throwing a little bit of luck into your strategy can make certain kinds of games a lot more interesting. But for random crits in particular, that's not so often the case. When you put that sort of thing in a game where plenty of mechanics are consistent and predictable, it's like mixing bleach and ammonia. On their own, these ingredients can work, and yeah, what you've just made is functional, but it's functional as mustard gas. However, I am nothing if not objective and open-minded, and I wanted to dissect a few different examples from video games to prove a point that not all random critical hits are created equal, and in some cases, they can be done right, and even be outright beneficial to the game. So let's answer the question, when are random crits good? I'll be giving three examples. One where random critical hits are implemented just about as poorly as they possibly can be, one where they're just kind of half-assed, and one where I think they're perfectly fine and a valid addition to the game. We'll be looking at the badly implemented example first, and the game in question should be a surprise to no one. Team Fortress 2 So, what makes random critical hits in TF2 so terrible? Well, just about everything, really. From a game design perspective, they are genuinely one of the most baffling choices I have ever seen from such an otherwise polished game. And hilariously enough, it's that very polish itself that makes them stick out like a glowing rocket-propelled grenade. TF2's design and art direction is genuinely a masterful work of art that all online games should strive to emulate. And I'm not talking about the cartoony, cel-shaded art style. There's a science to the base design of each class and the weapons they hold, their posture and silhouettes, giving new and old players alike a sense of exactly what you're looking at and what that class and weapon is capable of. Just look at a heavy compared to a spy, and you can guess which one is going to take longer to kill, even if you've never played the game before. There's a sense of consistency in the weapons. Once you've taken a hit from a rocket, a grenade, or a shotgun, you know what that's capable of and how to react accordingly next time you face one and bold players can be rewarded with risky, dangerous plays that may involve them taking damage they know they can take in exchange for allowing themselves to be more aggressive and in a more advantageous offensive position. It's downright masterful. And then this completely out of place mechanic comes along and says, just kidding, and one of you gets turned into a pile of goo without any warning or reason. Random crits in TF2 are such a stupid mechanic because they fly straight in the face of the entire core design of the game. Everything about class and weapon recognition means basically nothing if any of them are capable of instantly one-shotting you at basically any range or wiping out half a team. There's no way to account for their existence. You either pretend they don't exist because to acknowledge any possible interaction as one where a random crit can kill you is the same as never engaging the enemy at all if you're trying to play smart, or you just jump into a stupid situation and hope for the best. Now there are some weapons like the Battalion's Backup or the Vaccinator, which remove or dramatically reduce critical hit damage, and these weapons are certainly very powerful. But because you have no indication of when a random crit is going to come at you, these weapons are essentially worthless as a deterrent unless by pure chance you happen to pop a backup buff or a vaccinator charge 
as the enemy is about to hit you with a crit. And not that they'll know they're about to do that either. These weapons are far better suited for the many guaranteed critical hits the game has to offer because those are predictable and far better designed. Snipers set up predictable sight lines. Kritzkrieg medics have voice line and sound effects letting you know when they've popped, and the same goes for flog pyros and frontier justice engineers. And these fall far more into a sort of back and forth balancing match where each option has its upsides and drawbacks against its counterpicks, as opposed to whatever the fuck random crits bring to the table. None of this is to mention the issues this causes with the game's balance. Not all random crits are created equal, since some can wipe out half a team or more with a single burst, while others might secure you an assured victory in a 1v1. And when it comes to the individual classes, their specific quirks can end up causing even more problems in regards to game balance. The primary weakness of the sniper class is close proximity. If he wants to survive a close range fight, he's going to need to pull off a risky, an incredibly precise close range quickscope, which is no easy feat, or else spend a lot of time in a longer fight that he most likely won't have the health or DPS to sustain. Oh, or he could press 3 on his keyboard and click on the enemy gamer once, and 60% of the time it'll instantly kill them. A, a sick dog. Soldier banners are an incredibly useful buff for your entire team that can easily secure a push or flat out win the game. So how about to rub salt into the wound of killing three people instantly with a critical rocket you didn't even know you were going to fire? You also pop a buff banner and give yourself and everyone on your team even more damage to work with. Or to rub battery acid into that wound, how about you get a random crit that instantly charges up your battalion's backup and then use that buff to completely shut out a crit that would have killed you and even the playing field. This, by the way, is the intended function of random critical hits in the game. To make players who are already doing well crush even harder. This is why the only way to manipulate your critical hit chance is by doing ass loads of damage. That's just what the mechanic is designed to do. Oh, sorry, I forgot the other means of manipulating your crit chance. Uh, equipping nothing but weapons that can deal no random crits. The only meaningful way of manipulating your own chance of getting random critical hits without straight up cheating is to directly gimp yourself against everyone else who doesn't do the same. And so, it is for these reasons, and so many more that I just don't have time for, that random critical hits in Team Fortress 2 are not only the worst mechanic in the game, but one of the worst examples of this particular mechanic that I have ever seen. And outside of MVM, where these problems generally don't apply, I see no reason for their continued existence. But let's take a look at a more mixed example. One that's a lot more understandable in why the crits exist to begin with. Pokemon. Well, Pokemon outside of Gen 1 anyway, because those crits are just something else, man. Pokemon is a very mixed bag when it comes to its handling of critical hits, because on the one hand, I find them to be a somewhat necessary addition, but on the other hand, I find their implementation to be flawed. In Pokemon, all of your attacking moves, with some very minor exceptions, have a chance of dealing a critical hit which will deal 2 times or 1.5 times its normal damage depending on the generation you're playing in, and bypass all defensive buffs the enemy has, if they have any at all. This makes the purpose of random crits in Pokemon instantly apparent. They're meant to break through defensive stalls, and that's a very practical purpose and one I can definitely get behind, especially considering how notoriously stall-heavy the competitive meta is. However, I have quite a few problems with this implementation, and many of them involve simply playing the game as a single-player experience, as opposed to the more competitive PvP side of things. For starters, despite random crits being a mechanic meant to punish stall tactics, they're kind of just always on, and the enemy stalling to begin with doesn't increase the rate of critical hits it's always the same unless it's directly manipulated with a move that has a high crit rate like Slash, having an ability like Super Luck, using Focus Energy, or holding an item like a Scope Lens, or hell, stacking all of these together at once. What this means is people who simply play normally and don't try to stall 
are at the same amount of risk of getting punished by a crit or winning a fight because of one as those who do participate in these stalling tactics. This brings me to my next problem. If you're just playing single player, it's not very common at all for enemies to use defensive stalling tactics. So the mechanic is mostly pointless there unless you're the one stalling, which let's be real, the vast majority of people are not because they either don't need to since they one shot everything in the game anyway, or they're a dumb kid who just soloed the entire game with their Torterra. I was that dumb kid. Realistically, all it does is serve as a means of screwing over Nuzlocke players who don't account for the mechanic at every single given opportunity, which hey, maybe I take a little more personally than others since that's the primary way I play the game these days, but that's just me. That's not to say I'm against the inclusion of RNG in Pokemon Combat. It's implemented quite well in several situations. If you make contact with a Pokemon that has an ability like Static or Flame Body, you risk inflicting status on yourself. Plenty of moves will have a chance of inflicting status effects that makes them even more worth using, and if you use a move that's powerful but inaccurate like Fire Blast, you run a solid chance at missing and wasting your turn entirely in exchange for dealing more damage when you do hit. And some moves are entirely based around RNG to dictate how powerful they are as part of their risk reward system. Moves like Magnitude and multi-hit attacks like Bullet Seed and Fury Attack are prime examples of this. It's a fairly balanced give and take. Factors like these either serve to balance powerful moves without giving them drawbacks that directly impede the user like Double Edge or Close Combat will, or in order to give utility to Pokemon where they might not have it before, and they can always be accounted for and worked around in a fight, many of them being an intentional assumed risk on the part of the player. You don't need to teach a Pokemon an inaccurate move, but if it's powerful enough, that could be enough justification for not running something more reliable, but overall weaker. And even if it is down to RNG, certain abilities and moves will proc their effects often enough that it can be accounted for and relied on to a certain degree. Crits though are a major exception to this formula because you kind of just can't account for them when fighting them and even when using them. They're infrequent enough as to be unreliable to use on your own terms and unpredictable when used on the enemy's terms. And the only means of negating crits altogether is to use one of the handful of Pokemon that has access to Lucky Chant and waste a turn using that move when the odds are you won't even see a crit during that fight, or use one of the even smaller handful of Pokemon with a crit negating ability like Shell Armor. Even with high crit rate moves and items like a Scope Lens, it's hard to spec into crits, and you can try slashing away for quite some time without landing a single critical hit, which can make trying to take advantage of the mechanic feel frustrating and pointless especially when a crit would have come in real handy. And don't even get me started on how this mechanic affects catching Pokemon you actually want. Sure would be a shame if that shiny you found just fucking died by some mechanic completely outside of your control. Good thing you were able to break through its defensive buffs, huh? And the funny thing is, there is actually a way for the enemy to sort of stall you out that they'll sometimes employ, at least to a far more frequent degree. But it's not a defensive stall. It's evasion boosts and accuracy drops, which random critical hits do nothing for. Why do you insist on double damage? <laughs> You're at four now! You're at four evasion! You don't need more! Oh my fucking god, does it have other moves? Do you have other moves, you stupid fuck? You fucking fucker. You're trying to bait out a crit for for my <laughs> for my footage, right? That's what you're trying to fucking do here. That's what you're trying to do to me. I get you. Why is this stupid fucking bug getting a single silver wind boost the most threatening thing that could possibly happen in this entire Nuzlocke? You're worthless! God damn it! <laughs> In fact, the mechanic accomplishes the same thing as a defensive stall. It increases the Pokemon's survivability, which in turn, ironically enough, allows it to roll the dice with critical hits far more often than their opponent gets the chance to, and in the worst case scenarios, allows them to set up both evasion and defensive buffs, 
meaning you need a double dice roll if you want to kill them at all. Wands Kingdra in Pokemon Emerald is a fantastic example of evasion being used against you. If you don't have a dragon type, which you probably won't, and even if you do, it's probably going to be a Flygon or Altaria which can't take an Ice Beam, you're not going to be able to kill this thing quickly. And it'll start setting up double teams and then rest whatever damage you manage to do to it. And so begins a stall that no similar mechanic exists to solve. But you might say that there are moves like Magical Leaf, Shockwave, or Aerial Ace with a guaranteed hit rate or later on, abilities like No Guard that allow you to always hit your opponent. And this is true, but this is where my next problem with the mechanic comes into play. In Gen 5, the solution to random critical hits was introduced with a set of moves that had a relatively low base power, but were guaranteed to deal critical damage 100% of the time. These moves were Frost Breath and Storm Throw and I think they were a fantastic addition. But rather than being a legitimate solution to the many issues brought on by random crits, it seems like these moves were just a gimmick, an experiment even. Like so many other things in Gen 5 and ever since. Ever since these moves were introduced, we have gotten no other widely available equivalents like them. Every other guaranteed critical hit move has been exclusive to a single Pokemon. And look! Flower Trick on Meowscarada has both the guaranteed critical hit effect and the guaranteed hit rate of Swift. Where the fuck was this move when I was struggle stalling Wine? I think that instead of having random critical hits, Pokemon should have certain moves deal guaranteed critical damage. Obviously this raises the question of what to do with moves like Slash or Night Slash with boosted crit rates or abilities like Super Luck. And to that I say, change them in a way that benefits the new system. Slightly nerf the damage on high crit rate moves, but make them deal guaranteed crits. And as for Super Luck or the Scope Lens, instead of having it increase the crit rate, have them increase critical damage like Sniper. This would even give the Scope Lens extra utility since you could then stack the damage buffs. If we already have abilities like Huge Power that just make physical attacks even stronger, then I don't see why not. The only real outlier here is Focus Energy, but hey, it's not like Game Freak is a stranger to just erasing moves from existence, now are they? My only other thought for Focus Energy is that it guarantees your next move will deal critical damage even if it's not a crit-inducing move, which is at least something and you could make the move a lot more worth using then, especially in the early game where you don't have access to attack buffing moves like Swords Dance. Another possible solution is to leave the crit rate as is, but set it to zero against Pokemon without defensive buffs, and have the crit rate increase the more defensive buffs you get, creating a much more tangible risk reward system for buffing your defenses. Although this doesn't solve every problem we've covered, but it would be far preferable to what we have now. But that's Pokemon covered. The purpose behind the mechanic is clear, but there's other solutions to the problems at hand, and arguably not enough being done about other similar mechanics. And with that, we come to our final example, a game where I think random crits are handled perfectly. Hades. All right, one more time. So, in both of the previous examples, there's a common theme. You don't choose to participate in whether or not random critical hits even exist. There's no warning, no indication that this is even a possibility until it happens, no nothing. You just get sucker punched by random increased damage. But in Hades, that's not the case. Not only do enemies not get access to critical hits, meaning you aren't going to get screwed over by a high-powered attack you couldn't see coming, but because it's a single-player game, you're also not screwing anyone over with a high-powered attack you didn't know was coming. You're just fighting ghosts and shit, and ghosts don't have any rights. But one of the best parts is, you're never forced to get a random crit against your will at all. Don't want random crits? Cool, just don't take the Artemis boons and you're all set. Only one Olympic god will give you boons that result in you getting random crits. And this is told to you in very plain text that explains exactly what the boon will do. So if you just avoid her when possible, you're golden. The mechanic may as well not exist as far as you're concerned. 
I think that's such a huge breath of fresh air to people who don't want their victories to feel hollow because they got lucky in a dice roll. But there's a lot more than that going on here. The boons you'll get from the other gods will come with extra damage and guaranteed effects, and these can be incredibly useful and powerful. Poseidons are fucking ridiculous on tighter stages, and Aphrodite gives you the strongest attack boost on your boons of any of the gods. But Artemis only gives you the damage bonus, plus a chance at critical hits. Not a guarantee. These crit rates can go decently high, especially when enemies are marked, and if the boons are at a higher rarity, but the point is, there's a serious give and take here that makes the mechanic more balanced. If you just want a crit rate on all of your attacks, while keeping boons from the other gods on your primary, special, and cast attacks, then the rate is much lower, about what you'd expect from other games, and you won't get to take advantage of it nearly as often. This can make it a very useful throwaway boon if you don't have much choice but to go through an Artemis door, since there's effectively no downside to taking it, but the situations where it's going to help you out are limited compared to if you want to choose to spec into a crit build. So what you're giving up can be pretty extreme, but if you have the right build for it, then specking into crits with Artemis can be frankly disgusting. The aspect of Hestia is downright despicable with a high crit rate, as if it wasn't strong enough already. And that's another great part of this. If you want to go all in on the crits, then the game enables you to do so and gives you everything you need to make the experience as streamlined and enjoyable as possible for your personal tastes. You can take Artemis' charm with you and guarantee a good start. You can pick the weapon and aspect that best fits the build you want to go for, enemy settings, Daedalus hammer upgrades, reset doors that don't appeal to your build, picking other gods for the duo boon that appeals best to your build, it's all up to you to play the game in the way that you find the most fun. And because Hades is such a pick up and play kind of game, even if things don't go perfectly your way in one run, it's not too much to ask to just hop in and try again, experiment with different weapons or aspects, or try different combinations of boons. On top of just being good game design in general, because I kind of want to have fun in the games I play, this means that despite random critical hits being, you know, random, everything about how they appear in the game is completely up to the player to control, including whether or not they even exist. And all of this is in a roguelite game where nearly everything is semi-randomized anyway. They didn't have to do that, but they did it anyway. Hell, even if you have no choice but to go through an Artemis door, she still has boons that have nothing to do with giving you a critical hit rate at all. Your attacks can just shoot little arrows at enemies now, your cast can damage enemies upon exiting them, you can get extra cast uses, or your dash strike can pack more of a punch. As long as you know what you're doing and have the resources to reroll your boons, you can still comfortably walk into an Artemis door and not walk out with random crits if that's something you want to do. Play your freedom to enable, disable, or manipulate crits to their heart's content is the best way for this mechanic to survive in the future of gaming, if you ask me. These standards could apply to just about any single player, or at least co-op PvE game, including MVM and TF2, and Pokemon, and it's a system Hades executes flawlessly. It speaks volumes that I'm someone who generally hates random crits in games, but I still find going for crit-focused builds in Hades to be pretty fun. And also, Artemis is best girl. How come I can't put up a poster of Artemis in my room? What the hell? Why have you left me stuck with nothing but a poster of this pink-haired whore? Well, at least we can all rest easy knowing that mechanics like these will never make their way into professional, competitive, high-level games. 
Oh. Oh. 